What's up YouTube? We're back at it again. We're still waiting for some parts for the bug so we can finish putting together the front end. We haven't gotten the tie rods or the front brakes. Uh, we're doing a disc brake conversion on that. You can watch our last video here to kind of get an update on that. But because we're waiting on parts, actually today we're gonna to be working on the truck. And we're gonna be doing a couple small things to get it more into daily driver condition. Uh, the biggest thing right now is we, um, these trucks only came with locks on the passenger side door. Um, I think it had to do with like, uh, if you were parking, they didn't want you opening your door in traffic or locking your door. Um, I don't really know. Uh, I also read online, it was like, so you had to be a gentleman and let your lady in first and then she would unlock the door for you later. But either way, um, we only have one door lock on the car, um, but we don't have the key to it. So I went online on CJ Pony Parts and I bought a kit for a new door lock. And then the other problem we were having was with our ignition cylinder. Um, our battery keeps dying and I believe it's because our ignition cylinder is actually kind of finicky and sometimes it's going into accessory mode instead of off excuse me and i think that's why we're draining the battery because i probed out in the past and i couldn't figure out any other real drains on the battery so i'm hoping if we replace the ignition cylinder and the door lock we'll be able to really uh comfortably daily this because we'll be able to lock the doors and we'll also be able to um we'll have one key for everything which we don't currently have we only have an ignition key and we have nothing for the door so i can't lock it um, which kind of sucks whether I'm just going out to the store or even just parking it in my driveway overnight. I can't lock the doors. Um, so we're going to fix all that now. Um, I don't have a manual or anything, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I've Googled some stuff and saw found some stuff on YouTube myself. So we're going to start with the door lock because that's kind of the most necessary so we can lock it and have a key on it. And then we'll move on to ignition cylinder. And then hopefully by the time we finish this, we'll have our parts to finish up the bug as well. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is remove all the screws from this panel so we can get to the back side of the old lock. This is also how we'll install the new one. All right, now we got this little access panel off. We can kind of take a look and see what we're working with. Cool. And that ain't too bad, it's pretty straightforward. So we have that exact same assembly. It looks like there's a clip or something on the back that keeps that hook in place. But then that should be pretty easy. It doesn't look like there's any monsters living in here. Door actually seems to be in pretty good shape, honestly. So what we'll have to do is get that clip out, which we have a new one. We'll get, sorry. We'll get this clip out, and then we'll remove that hook, or maybe in opposite order. But that clip has to go, and then we'll be able to get the lock out. All right, we got the lock out, and it wasn't too bad. You see, here's the old one. That's how it goes in the car, just like here. And here's the new one. And you see what the problem we're having is this guy actually this is how the little rod is kept on for the door lock and it fits in the second hole here the problem is on the new one we don't have those two holes so i'm actually just going to take this one apart and put this little uh, arm on the new one to make sure it works exactly as it's meant to so we'll do that real quick and then we'll get switched over and we're installed in the door. It should be no problem. And like I said, we're only doing the passenger side, so we're pretty much done already as long as we can get this in smoothly. The hardest part was getting that little clip that holds this whole assembly to the door off. It was 
pretty much rusted in place. So you can see that it's pretty easy. We just knocked off the C-clip and then switched out these two, um, the arms, the one with the two holes versus the one with one hole. So now we should be able to reinstall it and uh, we'll use this clip again to make sure that our rod all fits in right. But this should be st pretty straightforward. And we have a new, um, we have a new backing clip as well. So we should have no issues with the old one. We have a new one of these guys. And then they gave us a second lock to do the driver side door, but it doesn't come with one, which means I'm gonna cut a hole. And I think no matter what, it's just never gonna look right. And also I really don't see a good reason in destroying the door just to add a lock. As long as we have one and we can lock it from the inside, which we can using the door handles. Um, I think we're good. So we're gonna keep it old school, keep this lock as a backup in case we ever wanna install it or if we ever have problems with the driver's side, I mean the passenger side. But for now, we're just gonna switch out what we have. And then once we're done with that, we'll go to the ignition cylinder. All right, so just like that, we have our new lock in place. You can see right there with the clip back on the right arm. So let's give it a shot. So let's see, we got our lock here. Let's see. So now the door in theory should be locked. Let's see if they're key. Oh wow, this is super subtle. So it's just, just that to lock it. And just that much to unlock it. Cool. Right, that was pretty easy. So the next thing we'll do is the ignition cylinder. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do in here is we're actually gonna remove this ignition cylinder here and replace it with a new one that matches the key for the door cylinder. And I've been having some issues where it's been like kind of possibly in accessory or an on when I think it's an off. So I'm hoping this helps with it. If not, I'm gonna have to replace the bigger part of it um, where with this barrel feeds into, but I'm hoping that this is enough. So we'll do this next. It should be pretty straightforward. I gotta put the key in. I have this little piece of welding wire that I'm gonna use to push the pin. And then we'll just do the same thing to get the new one in place. So I believe what we wanna do here is we'll put this to accessory. And we'll stick our little pin in and move a little further. Now we should be able to take it out. And this is actually hopefully going to be really easy. Now similarly, we'll put this in the exact same position. So we'll put the pin in and get it into our past accessory position. There's actually a little dimple I can show you on the um, original one. So we're in our dimple, which goes right about here. Then we turn it. That's it. Should be good to go. Key okay, out. I think the battery, the battery is disconnected yet yeah, on and start. Just tr to try to show you guys again, um, what we did there, you can see this pin 
hole right there. And so you can see on this back side, so there's the pin, and then there's the little spring that it actually activates with. And so right now the, here, this would be if the key was in place, just regularly able to rotate. And when we're doing it in the lock cylinder, what we're actually doing is we're depressing this through the hole here and allowing it to fall into that dimple, which I guess is the reason you can pull it in and out. So that's basically what you have to replicate. You press this in with a piece of wire and rotate the key to the dimple location with this little bump here. And then to install it, it needs to be in that same location. So pretty easy and uh, really quick. All right, so now we'll just fire it up once just to make sure nothing weird happened with the ignition cylinder or anything like that. And this could also, because I haven't started up in a while. The other thing you guys might notice is I, uh, I actually went back to the wood slats now. Um, let me know what you think. I actually prefer how this looks. I think it's really cool. I think it gives the car a little, the truck a little character. Um, but so as far as project work, that's really all we can do for right now. Uh, I ordered seat belts for the truck because it doesn't currently have any. It never did, I guess. Uh, I think they were a factory option at that time. Um, so I ordered some lap belts for it so I can get seat belts in it so my wife will actually ride around with me. Um, and then other than that, we're not really planning on doing much for the truck. Um, as far as the bug is concerned, we received one box of parts, which I don't want to show you guys because I want to make you wait to watch the bug video that we're coming out with. Uh, but we still don't really have everything we need to put it back together. So that's on hold until we have new parts. Um, so we can really replace everything in the front end at once. Uh, other than that, uh, we do have the Triumph, the Thunderbird 900. I haven't forgotten about that. Uh, I really want to wrap up everything on the front end of the bug so I can drive it this spring and this summer. We're not really going to do anything with the truck. So at that point, we can pull one or both of these out of the garage and get working on that bike so we can turn around, uh, get it running and flip it to buy a new drivetrain for the truck. So there's a lot that will be going on this summer. It's just taking a little while to get some parts so we can get other things moving. So with all that, be sure to like and comment, subscribe for more content, share with your friends, and I'll see you again soon.